welcome to the lab safety notes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to break these lab safety notes into three different parts. So each part should be fairly short. And you need to be able to fill in your lab safety notes. I'm going to check to make sure you have your notes filled in prior to you taking the test. So you will not be allowed to take the test or if you take the test and you haven't turned in your safety notes, you do not get credit for the test. I'll just delete your test and you'll have to retake it when you finally do turn in your safety notes. So general lab safety. So this is part one. Now, this is a cartoon that I like. So look at it and look at the cartoon, the picture, and I'm going to read the caption. Okay, this is a microscope and that is a Bunsen burner. Do you guys get it? Get it? So look at these. You know, they both look similar, but this is a Bunsen burner, and he lost an eye. So he probably thought the Bunsen burner was the microscope. And you might think, well, I would never do that. But it just goes to say that you need to be careful in the science lab. It's very easy to do something and not think that, oh, what I'm doing is dangerous, but it very well could be. So lab safety. First of all, lab safety is everyone's responsible. It's not just mine. It's not just yours. It's everybody's. And this is what could happen. And you might say, well, this could never happen. Well, when I was in college, our lab, our science lab, burnt. And I can remember going in there after the fire, and it looked a lot like this, where we went in and we helped clean it up so we could continue to have class there. But we helped you know, move any good glass, wearing different things out. Now, it didn't have all the chemicals like you see here, and it didn't have oxygen tanks. I'd be worried that this would explode. Uh, although it might not be oxygen because it's it's usually oxygen tanks are green, but who knows what it actually is. I'd be a little worried, but yet this actually happened in our science lab while I was in college. And you got to be careful. Something like this could happen. If you think, oh, what would happen if I pulled, poured this over someone's hair? Ultimately, this is what you could end up looking like because it could, you know, be an acid or, of course, it would look a lot worse if it was an acid. So you're not doing experiments on people. You know, a lot of times people want to be funny and they want to do things and, you know, pour stuff on people or put stuff on their backs. You never know when monkeying around could result in something happening. So things saying things like I didn't mean to and it wasn't my fault are two statements that have no place in the science lab. If someone is hurt or equipment is broken, these statements cannot do undo the harm. So a lot of times you didn't mean to do it, or it wasn't my fault. But the first one, especially, I didn't mean to do it. Of course, typically we don't mean to hurt someone. But yet when we do something and it hurts someone, a lot of times accidents can be prevented. So you got to be careful in a lab. So if you get kicked out of the lab because you're not behaving, if you're not living up to my expectations, I don't accept these two statements from anybody. Lack of pre-lab preparation is probably the main threat to safety in our lab. So if you and your group, if you're not prepared, if you, if for example, sometimes I'll assign a reading. And then the next day we do a lab where you need to know what you about the readings. You don't need to know about what you read in order to do the lab well to answer the questions. Well, if you're not doing the readings, how are you going to do the lab? Now, some of you, if you don't keep up with the labs, if you don't keep up with the readings and the homework, you're not going to be doing the labs. I'll have you do alternatives. Or if you're not doing, you know, if you're not doing well in the quizzes, you're not taking them seriously, you're not behaving in class, you will be pulled from labs. Because I'm worried about the safety. If you're not doing any homework, if you're not taking notes, if you're not listening, if you're not paying attention, why would I have you do the labs if potentially you could get someone hurt? So we're always going to err on the side of caution. So make sure you do what you're supposed to do. Make sure you listen. Make sure you follow directions. First thing, keep the aisles clear. When you look around here, you know, with all of our desks the way they are, it's very easy for someone to trip on something. Or if there is an emergency we need to exit, please put your books underneath your chairs. That's what it's there for. Don't put your books on the lab tables because we're going to be using those lab tables. So don't get in those habits. Some of these lab tables, we have chemicals on it. So if you come and you just plop your books on the table, you might have chemicals on the bottom of your books now. So at the beginning of each lab, I will also give you a chance to ask questions. If you are not sure, you need to ask. Now, the first thing I'm thinking of, if we went through the directions, you should know what to do anyway. But every once in a while, sometimes I'll miss a direction or I won't say something as clear, clearly as I could. So don't be afraid to say, hey, Mr. Rattoon, we're unsure of what to do. 
Are we supposed to do it this way? And I'll help you out the best I can. Now, sometimes I'll say, well, what do you think? Or we talked about in the beginning of the hour, what do you think we do? So sometimes I'll look to see what you already know before I just simply give you the answer. So here's where you start filling in a note. So look at your note sheet. Number one, it says, know where all lab safety equipment is. So you have to fill in lab safety equipment. Now there's a huge gap there because I expect you to write all these down. So if we have a quiz sometime, you know, point to where the fire blanket is, point to where the fire extinguisher is, point to where the gas shutoff valve is. You should know all these things. So if an accident should occur, you can find them. So soaps, sink, paper towels. You might look at this and say, how is this safety equipment? Wash your hands. After every single lab we do, wash your hands. And you don't need to go to the bathroom to wash your hands. Look around. We actually got four different sinks, and three of the sinks have um, three different faucets. The one in the back, there's a red tab on the handle. That's hot water. We've got soap dispensers. We've got paper towels. But wash your hands because other people are using this lab equipment, so you never know what's on it. Could be germs. It could be acids, things like that. Now, the acids that we use aren't very strong, so it's not going to burn your hand right away. But if you leave it on your skin for a long period of time, it could cause a slight burn. The gas shutoff button, if you look at that, it's over by the door. Um, or if it's on the wall near the door, whether you're in Mr. Phillips' class or if you're in Mr. Wittoon's class. Mr. Wittoon's is right by the door. Mr. Phillips is a little ways off. It's over by the sink behind um, the counter there by the sink. Aprons. You will have to wear aprons for certain labs. And I've never had an issue with this. So hopefully you don't come and say, well, I'm not going to wear aprons because on certain labs, if you don't wear aprons and it's required, you don't do the lab. You might be thinking, great, I don't want to do the lab. Well, then you're going to have to do the alternative, which is typically to write a paper. So you're going to have to decide what you want to do. Broom and dustpan, cleaning stuff up. They're on the counters. Use them. The telephone, you might think, how is this safety equipment? But if something happens, you need to know where the phone is. And if you dial 3021, you will get the office. And there's a whole bunch of phone numbers right next to my phone. So if you 3021 is busy, you could always call a different number. If it's a real emergency, someone could run up to the office and try and get someone. Grippers and tongs we'll talk about in class. These are both used to help you hold on to objects. So before we do the first lab where we have hot glassware, I will show you how these work, how not to use them, and how to use them, and how they will protect your hands from burns. Another piece of safety equipment are goggles in the goggle cabinet. You will have to wear goggles for some of the labs. You just have to. It, it's a requirement if you choose. I'm not wearing goggles. And again, I've never had anybody just flat out refuse to wear goggles. Some people don't like it, but then they realize, well, I have to do the lab. Otherwise, there's an alternative where you're going to have to write the paper. Fire blankets, you know, if someone catches on fire, clothing, whatnot, you wrap it around you, stop, drop, and roll. So where are the fire blankets? Can you locate those? When you're watching this video, look around the room. Do you see the fire blankets in our rooms, whether you're in Mr. P's room or Mr. W's room? If not, get up. Get up out of your seat and try and find it so you know where it is. The fire extinguisher, Do, can you see it from where you're at? Again, look for those. They're in different spots for my room. It's right over by my desk. Fire alarm pull. So if for some reason there is a fire alarm, and we've never had a pull it in the 22, 23 years I've been here. But if for some reason there is a fire or something goes on where we need to clear the building, the nearest exit, if you need, it's near the exit by Miss Halverson's room down the hallway. So make sure you go down there, or there's one up by the commons. So if something happens, that a fire does happen, and I can't get out, or I might yell, go pull the fire alarm, and you guys get out while I try and control the fire, just know where they are. The eye wash slash emergency shower is kind of a combination of the two. Before we do the first lab, I will show you. Um, for Mr. Phillips and Mr. Toon, it's connected to our sinks up front, or Mr. Phillips is kind of off to the side, but it is up front. You got to be very careful with this. It's very easy for people to be messing around and not meaning anything by it, but all of a sudden they bump it, that water is going to go all over the floor. If that happens, you're going to have to get a mop out. You're going to have to clean it out. So please be careful. 
Now, never play with lab equipment or materials. It's very, I, I don't know how to say this. It, it's not necessarily easy, but sometimes it's really a, like when you walk into a room and, and you see certain things in the lab and they just draw you to them. So it's very easy to come into class, especially for in the hallway doing hallway duty, to come into a class, go to a lab, start playing with the materials. Don't play with the lab equipment. Wait till we give you directions. So sometimes you'll be asked to not do a lab before a lab even starts because when I walk in after doing hallway duty, I see that you're playing with equipment. We've had equipment broken in the past because people are playing with it. They don't know what it is. They don't know what it does. And then we start class, boom, something's broken. We can't even do the lab because so one of the classmates, one of your classmates may have broken something. But that has happened in the past. Always follow instructions and wait until you are told to begin before starting any lab. So don't just walk in, pick up the lab, and start doing it. Usually I'll take attendance or I may say, okay, go ahead, get started in the lab. But don't just assume that you're supposed to do it right away unless we tell you to. Number four, never eat or smell anything in the lab. And there's some times where we'll have some chemicals that they'll look a lot like water. Or someone might take a beaker and say, oh, I'm going to pour some water into this and I'm going to take some water. I'm going to use it as a cup. But we may have had acids in there. Or if you have food and you put your chips on the table and the tables have had acids on them and you eat the chips off the table, you know, you may have a nasty burn in your mouth. So never eat or smell anything in the lab. So here's just a poster that a student created for me once. It just says, be safe. Don't drink the chemicals. So if you go, and I've already seen some of you do this when we had the um, ice cubes in the back. Some of you just went up and you just, and you just quick smell them right away. You always waft it towards you. Because if this was a very strong acid and you just went and put your nose down here and you went and took a deep breath, you could have just burned the mucus linings of your nose. You, you might have had to rush you to St. Clair or even down to Madison because they would have to reconstruct the inner part of your nose. So you always waft stuff towards you, where you wave it towards you. That way you get a little bit of it at a time, and you'll know if it's a bad substance that you shouldn't be smelling. Five, never do unauthorized experiments. Now, you can see that this is a fake picture, but I don't want you to do things like, you know, golly, that person has long hair. I wonder what would happen if we cut it off. Oh, does long hair burn? What burns faster, blonde hair or brown hair? We don't do unauthorized experiments. That's where people get hurt. Watch this one. If you look at this one, here's a guy, he's kind of bored. And some of you might be bored at times in class. Glub, glub, glub as he's pouring this in. All of a sudden, boom. Watch him. He's like, this mass, everything went everywhere. So what does he do? He's got a big smile on his face. Glub, glub, glub. He's doing it again. So again, you got to be careful when you mix certain things together. It could be a violent reaction. Now, most of the things in here, there's, we're not going to be able to produce that violent reaction. But in the future, if you get into more advanced classes, you could create some problems. There have been people in Sauk County who have been taken to the hospital and the UW hospital for burns. It happened in Reedsburg a while ago, and it's happened to some other ones where experiments just didn't quite work out and people got burnt as a result. So you got to be very careful in the lab. Wear safety goggles and aprons when necessary. And they're going to be necessary whenever we work with chemicals, whenever we work with open flames, and whenever we work with hot liquids. Now, in the eighth grade, typically when we have open flames, we're going to have hot liquids because we use the Bunsen burners to create the hot liquids. Sometimes we might use a hot plate. Other, other grade levels, they might be using a hot plate. So whenever we use this, if I say, okay, you need to wear goggles. Now, if the chemicals are really, really weak, like salt water, I may not have you wear an apron. I might have you wear goggles. If it's really weak, I might even say you don't, don't even need to wear goggles for this. So there are going to be times where I'm going to say you have to wear your goggles. You have to wear your aprons. And I do expect you to wear them. Remember, goggles are sexy. Everybody loves people in goggles. So in all seriousness, you might think, you know, I look like a dork with goggles. I don't look good. 
think of it with a positive mindset. Everybody else is wearing them. So if you think you're going to look silly, well, then everybody else is going to look silly too. But I happen to think goggles are cool. So this is a poster that someone created once for me to hang in class just to kind of give people a, an idea that, yeah, goggles are cool. And in reality, they are. A lot of the sixth graders, I'll see sixth graders looking in here and seventh graders looking here because your other classes, you don't do the labs that we do in here. So a lot of sixth graders will look in here and say, ooh, wow, look what they're doing. Now, whether it's safety glasses or goggles, make sure you put them around your eyes. Now, these are safety glasses. These are goggles. But every once in a while, I'll see people wear them around their head or they'll put them down here. They'll take them off and they'll be by the lab. I'll only ask you to put them on a couple times. If you refuse to put them on or every time I turn my back, you have them off, I'm just going to ask you to leave the lab because it's for lab safety reasons. Then you're going to have to do the lab alternative, which is typically write me a paper. So science lab safety. Here's a minion. Now closed toe shoes we're going to talk about later on in a different video. Protective gloves sometimes we wear, not typically at this grade, but I do wear protective gloves when I create some of the chemicals that we use. We do have goggles, we do have aprons, and when we use the Bunsen burners we'll talk about having your hair back so your hair doesn't catch on fire. Keep your work area clean. Don't bring all your books back so that things tip over, things fall over. Liquids will, you know, soak in your book. And that happens every year where someone sets their stuff. And sometimes it's a Chromebook where a Chromebook is soaked because someone turned the faucet on too fast and the water went flying everywhere. So just keep your work area clean. Then you don't have to worry about a lot of that. Make sure if you ever get injured or you have accidents, let your teacher know. We've had kids in the past not say anything, and all of a sudden Mr. Gunnell or one of the principals before Mr. Gunnell, it actually happened. He came down and he asked, well, what happened to so-and-so in class? And we'd be like, what do you mean what happened? I don't know what happened. Well, their parent called and their parents said that they got burned. What happened? And the student never told us. So how do we know you got hurt if you don't say anything? And typically, you know, it's, it's from burns or a small cut and it might get infected and then you go home and a parent gets worried, we never knew about it because you never told us. So if you think it's bad, if you think you should tell us, let us know right away. Otherwise, we have no way of helping you. We have no way of letting you know that, hey, you know, we can get you some ice. We can put it under water. We can try and get it disinfected. We don't know if you don't tell us. Tie long hair back. Do not wear loose clothing in the lab. No sandals. So there's going to be some times this year. Now, the sandals, we're usually pretty good with that. But there are going to be some times this year when we're working in the lab. If you have really long hair, typically longer than your shoulders, I'm going to ask you to wear a hair tie. I can always lend you a rubber band, or I'll give you the rubber band. You can keep it to put your hair back. Because there have been times, not necessarily in hair, but there have been at some schools where people have really long hair and they're not paying attention and they get it in open flame and it has caught on fire. Again, it hasn't happened here, but it has happened. So we got to be careful with this. So sometimes I'll say, okay, you got to wear closed toed shoes because we're doing a lab. You can't wear any, you shouldn't wear shoes like this anyway in the lab. It's hard on your feet. Sometimes I'll just say, go to your PE locker, get your tennis, get your gym shoes. That's all you need to do. So this may happen from time to time. Turn off all equipment when finished. Make sure you wash your hands with soap and water. We already talked about that. And use the dustpan and broom to clean up broken glass. We already talked about that. Now, always think before you act. And these are the two most common injuries in the lab. Believe it or not, burns. And usually the burns come from lighting a match. It's unbelievable how many of you don't know how to light a match. A lot of you use the wooden matches, but we have the cardboard matches, the paper matches with, with the, the striker on it. So a lot of people struggle with that because they don't ever use them and that's where they burn themselves. And the second most common injury in the lab are cuts. So do you have all your notes filled out for the first part? And we're going to do a second video for the second part and a third video for the third part. So again, make sure you have everything filled out. You are going to be tested on this, and you have to pass the test in order to do certain labs. So thanks, and make sure you ask questions if you don't know where any of the safety equipment is or if you have any questions about any of the safety items. Thank you.